Old man is me. Yeah. Oh. I should have been a rock and roll star. It is the Roger Fredenberg Show. Nice to be with you. Homeland Security Radio at all. So how are you all? Hmm? Loving the new America? Living in a brand new time, in a brand new world, in a brand new day. America. On the way of freedom, liberty, and truth, and justice, and all that. Got the Democrats scared, don't it? <laughs> it's amazing. So, you know, I, I really am cracking up. Donald Trump, first week out of the shoot, boom, 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 boom. We'll get into some of that. Campaign promises dropping like rocks. Like manna from heaven, man. Truly, like manna from heaven. And nobody, even the, even the Republicans are confounded by it. They're running for cover on Obamacare, trying to figure out what the heck now. I mean, oh my God, what are we into? What did we do? Oh, no. They've all been exposed for the lying, thieving, corruptocrats that they are on both sides of the political aisle. Don't make any attempt to saddle me with I'm 100% Trump all the time on everything because I'm not. But I do like his moxie. And I do like where he tells the media to get off, where he tells these politicians to get off. Stuff we've been wanting to say to them face-to-face or maybe on talk radio have been for years, but they weren't hearing us. I mean, think about it. Right now in, in airports all across the globe, people bound for America from, from terrorist hibernation camps. <laughs> Not coming. Locked down at airports all across the country, all across the world. Sorry. America just shuts you off. Bye-bye. Go back home. Go back to the fight, man. And it's it's freaking people out. I mean, they got lawsuits flying out in New York, people stuck at the airport. I mean, we're talking about a president so far who's walking the walk. Whether you agree with him at all, I don't care. Whether you like his opinions or his views or his directives, I don't really care. Even Judge Napolitano, who I'm not a real big fan of, said that Trump's revolutionary, like he hasn't seen anything like it in 45 years of watching politics. He just he just takes no prisoners. He's all about liberty, freedom, and the American way. We haven't had a leader like that ever in my lifetime or your lifetime, Most in most cases. It's just not, not typical. Trump doesn't want anything from us. He's not asking for any kind of special favors or treatment. He's just doing the job. And he's got them scared to death. I mean, he's got Theresa May coming over here, the Prime Minister of, of Great Britain. England's babe, you know. And she was anti-Brexit. She fought uh, um, against the, the, the Brexit move in England, and now she's the Prime Minister, and she's going to have to go with it. I don't care what they say. If they tried to change it now, I think they'd have a civil war there. And Trump is charming her. I mean, she's here in America. She's really kind of a polar opposite of Trump on many things. She tells her parliament back home, I can tell Trump, whatever. And when she comes over here, it's like, Mwah! standing there by the Winston Churchill bust, you know. And it's amazing. It's just, I'm just, I'm like, I'm, I'm like, I'm excited. I'm happy. A president that keeps his word. Oh, my God. Can you imagine a president? Who keeps his word? Scary. Isn't it scary? I mean, I don't even know how to deal with that. Oh, am I got a president that keeps his word. Wow. Now what? <laughs> you know? I mean, here he, he, I'm thinking about this. On Saturday, the president's on the, uh, on the phone with uh, this uh, Shinzo Abe. Prime Minister of Japan, Angela Merkel, Chancellor of Germany, uh, Francis Holland, or however you say that, President of France, Malcolm Turnbull, the Australian Prime Minister, and, and Vladimir Putin. And he's talking to the Chinese. He's talking to everybody. And you got to love the, the way the 
Mexican president went running for Quiversville. I mean, this is this is amazing stuff. Um, I mean, Mexico's going to stand up to the United States, really? Honestly, they're that dumb. they can't be that dumb, right? It just is never ending, and he's you know he's going to tell China on the South China Sea stuff. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, not going there, guys. And they're not liking it. But we've had old Wimpy Bob in the White House. The uh, the uh, I think uh, you know, in my opinion, Barack Obama demonstrated to me that he was certainly uh, um, in a pocket of the Muslim world. He was their lackey in the White House, for lack of a better definition. And uh, Trump is saying, "Hey, you can't come here." We're not going to deal with you, and we're no more, no more wussy, no more wussy boy in the White House. And now he's going to give preference to Christians who want to come here as refugees over Muslims. I mean, this is a, wow. I'm, I just, I'm, I'm, I just keep watching in amazement. I'm just, I'm, it's like going really wow. The president um, signing executive orders through the week, keeping the promise of the wall. A huge deal. I think a huge deal. Here's the president signing uh, the executive order on the wall. I just signed two executive orders that will save thousands of lives, millions of jobs, and billions and billions of dollars. These two orders are part of an immigration reform we outlined during the campaign. I want to emphasize that we will be working in partnership with our friends in Mexico to improve safety and economic opportunity on both sides of the border. I have deep admiration for the people of Mexico, and I greatly look forward to meeting again with the president of Mexico. We'll be doing that shortly. We will discuss close coordination on many, many important issues between our countries. See, Trump makes a, a very uh, important point that these people have been kicking America in the teeth for decades. And he's saying, you know what? We're not going to take it anymore. We're not just going to lay here and huddle up in a ball and put our arms over our face and pray that you don't hit any vital organs. We're done with that. What's in it for me? I mean, I love this, right? What's in it for me? Whiff them. What's in it for me? What's in it for the American people? These trade deals and all these crazy things. And then, then, then there's this, 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 this whining from the liberals. Oh, my God. Donald Trump's going to make the American taxpayers pay for the wall. Mexico will never pay for the wall. You know Mexico will never pay for the wall. You've got uh, that dorky um, Vicente Fox saying uh, the same thing. Here's Vicente. I have said and I have told Donald that Mexico will never pay for that wall. And now I have to repeat it to this guy seen Spicer which is going uh, exactly the same line. He again repeated this morning that Mexico is going to pay. They better understand that we are not paying for that wall, that U.S. taxpayers will pay for that wall. You're going to pay for the wall. It is a wall that is a waste. It serves no purpose on, on the objectives that are set for that. So why is it a wall? All right, so think about this for a minute, and I'll get back to that. But what Vicente Fox is really saying, let me, let me, let me interpret for you. I got to keep sending my drugs into America. I cannot have the wall. I'm going to send my drugs into America. You can't stop me. Do you understand, S.A.? I'm sending drugs in. I'm a drug cartel leader. I will not have a wall interfering with my drug trades. I mean, Mexico is owned lock, stock, and barrel by the cartels. And Trump knows this. And Trump's saying, you know, we got 50,000 people dead from drug overdoses last year, 50,000. Can you imagine if we killed 50,000 Mexicans with chemical warfare, what the world and the libtards would be saying about us? And then there's the cost of the wall. My God, man, President Obama spent almost a trillion dollars, like $800 billion on a stimulus plan that did not work. Where are the Democrats with all of their vitriol towards him on that? Acceptable. 
it's just stupid. It doesn't work. It does There's work. It's already a wall. It's, a, it's at least covering 70% of the borderline. A wall, big wall. The remaining 30% is desert, is places that there's no people there. Why is he going to waste taxpayers' money in uh, in, in this stupid wall? It, it, it's just a waste of money. Right. So we can pick up the tab for the carnage for all the drug overdoses and the death and the rehab and the medical treatment and all of the lost productivity and the horror that comes with drug abuse. We can afford all that, right? I mean, it's only, what, a couple hundred billion dollars a year, probably? Or we could build a wall and stop it. You know, they say, oh, the wall won't work. The wall won't work. Oh, yeah, ask Israel if walls work. Ask Egypt if the walls work. Ask the folks in Eastern Europe right now if they have the walls that work. The walls will stop. In Egypt and in Israel, they stop terrorism by 99.9%. 99.9%. I mean, that's just, come on, man. 99.9%. We'll be right back on the Roger Fredenberg Show. Do yourself a favor and stay tuned. (laughs) Don't go away. Somewhere down there, huh? Rising sun. It is the Roger Fredenberg Show. I'm Lance Gary. All nice to be with you. Happy to be here as usual. All so happy. Especially now that we have a new leader. And, you know, so far, so good. When uh, President Trump promised that on day one, he was going to begin to dismantle the Obama legacy, the phony fake fraud legacy, Obamacare being the centerpiece of that. Uh, Republicans and members of the press, uh, mostly uh, Democrats in Congress, others laughed at him. Well, they're not laughing now. (laughs) First executive order he signed on the 20th uh, directed that the federal government, folks who enforce Obamacare, um, essentially because it's not going to exist much longer in his mind, he ordered that all the regulations in place uh, be enforced with a softer, more beneficent, I forget how you said, anyway, beneficial tone. In other words, uh, no penalties, no fines, no set-offs, no taxes to be imposed by the IRS. Essentially got rid of the mandate, which is the heart and soul of Obamacare. They're not talking about this much in the media. They've been very quiet about it, but really what, what Obamacare is now is just a shell. It's just kind of housing uh, a, you know, a few people, the vast majority derelicts on, uh, on Medicare, Medicaid, whatever, Medicaid, I guess. And uh, because people on Medicare paid for it. Sorry about that. Don't mean to confuse. Um, And so, you know, my my wife and I and other people that I've talked to over the years, we're always always trying to figure out why it is that people think that poor people deserve free health care. I don't get it. How come working people don't deserve free health care? Everybody should have free health care. Now, healthcare is too expensive. I'm guessing, like most things, red tape and government boondoggles, government goon squads, you know, horrible, horrible uh, regulatory scumbags probably jack the cost of it up. And maybe doctors don't have to live in $30 million mansions. I don't know. But I do know this, that, that, you know, they've stretched this general welfare clause well beyond its limits in the Constitution. I don't think poor people have a right to health insurance. I think that there are people out here in this world, a vast majority of people on the dole in America, who take advantage. And there are people who live lifestyles for who um, you would not want to pay their medical bills. And here we are stuck with it. And I, and I think we need to rethink this. We need to say to people, you know, um, poor people don't deserve health care. Nobody, does, there's no entitlement, no right to health care. But we might create incentives for people to help provide very affordable health care to people who need it um, rather than the, uh, you know, 24 hour wait at the doctor's office. that was supposed to be a half hour and the five hundred dollar bill for some nurse to come by and say, yep, your blood pressure is the same as last time. Pay at the counter. I mean, there might be better ways to say, you know, 
there might be ways to do this better, okay? You might be able to establish county health clinics that do routine medical stuff really cheap and, you know, create a uh, revenue source for county or city governments. I mean, there are plenty of ways to do this. We need to think outside the box on it, I guess, is my point. But the system we have now where we just say, well, you know, if you're a poor people and we don't differentiate between poor and lazy in this country. So if you're a poor people, you just uh, you get everything for free. Well, I, I'm sorry, but I just, don't, I just don't go with that. It doesn't work for me. You know, poor people. I mean, what is a poor person? Somebody define for me. Radio Roger at AOL.com. What is a poor person? I mean, I'm just, I'm just curious what you think a poor person is. <sighs> and into the darkness we go. The Roger Fredenberg Show. Don't go away. We'll be right back. Because a vision softly creeping. Everybody look what's going down. Yeah. What's going down is here on the Roger Fredenberg Show. We're talking about freedom coming back to life here in America. Liberty is alive. I mean, think about it. The first time in my lifetime that a president has said to the government, I want you to take a look at and use discretion with the, uh, the government edict on health care. I want you to settle every single disagreement in favor of the citizen instead of Big Brother. Does that not just seem just amazing to you that the president said find in favor of individuals and against the government on health care? I mean, I just I just sit there and I go, wow. It's, I'm not used to having a president who respects me. You know, it's always about us respecting them. When people keep saying about Don Donald Trump's unconventional style as president or as a candidate. He needs to be more presidential. And I keep saying, what does that mean? I mean, does that mean he needs to be, you know, like this phony tied down statesman loon that runs around all stiff and, you know, babbles BS at me until I turn blue? You know, the typical, you know, statesman type president. I'm going to lie to you with a straight face, and I'm going to make you think I'm telling you the truth, and I'm going to really look cool while I do it in my time. I'd rather have a guy in a t-shirt and jeans telling people, hey, this is how it really is going to be. I like having a president who says to the Mexicans, look, you know, you've been screwing us for years. Um, we're not spreading our legs for you anymore, Bubba. Sorry, not going there. We're all done being uh, taken advantage of. We're all done being gang raped by the world. We're not done. We're, we're not going to do it anymore. This is like, you know what, Donald Trump? He's like the wife standing up to the abusive husband finally. Like, you know what? Hit me again. I'm going to put a bullet through your brain. Don't hit me again. And the world is like, well, we like abusing you. We like beating on you. We like taking advantage of you. We like screwing you. And the president just says, nope, not having it, not doing it anymore. You had your fun. You had your way, you know, but we're done now. And so what do you have? You have the government not knowing what to do about Obamacare. You have people frantically trying to figure out what to do with these, you know, these dangerous folks that were headed here from whereversville, uh, uh, you know, all across the planet. People, you know, migrants are grounded in Cairo. They're grounded in New York. They're grounded throughout the world. We've got refugees being put back on planes and sent back home. We've got a president who's radically cutting down the amount of refugees that we're going to have in this country. And we're going to start taking them from countries that are a little more copacetic, if you know what I'm saying. You've even got Trump interfering with and trying to stop a Chinese takeover of Hollywood properties and, and studios. You got a president who's literally talking about blockading China from the islands they claim in the South China Sea. I, I find it amazing. I just, I, I, I don't even know how to, you know, I don't even know how to express my happiness. It's just it's so amazing. Here's the president on his extreme vetting, um, 
uh, executive order. And this is the protection of the nation from foreign terrorist entry into the United States. We all know what that means. Protection of the nation from foreign terrorist entry into the United States. This is powerful. I mean, this is already in court. Establishing new vetting measures to keep radical Islamic terrorists out of the United States of America. We don't want them here. We want to ensure that we are not admitting into our country the very threats our soldiers are fighting overseas. I mean, wow, a president who's, who's actually concerned about America. And, and, and I'm telling you now, you need to arm yourselves with this one thought as these dumb Democrats and these dumb Republicans continue to try and say, well, Donald Trump wants to run up the national debt. He wants to borrow, borrow, borrow. Trump said the other day, look, um, we may not be able to balance the budget right away. We may have to shuffle our assets around. We may have to borrow some money. We may have to sell off some junk. We've got to fix the country. We've got to fix this infrastructure. We've got to jazz up our military. We've got to do things to you know, lower taxes and the burden on business so they can create jobs and economy. People are freaking out. They have just never, ever seen anything like it. And I'm, I'm just, I, I'm, I, I don't, well, it's just so amazing to me. It is just so fabulous. I mean, everybody's on the run. Everybody's on the run. I mean, he's getting touchy feely with, with Great Britain. The prime minister, I think, has been just kind of romanced by him. It's pretty incredible. He, you know, the detractors and people out there are getting their comeuppance. It's just kind of interesting. And the liberals, they're just completely uh, disenchanted. You may have heard about the liberals who were headed to Canada. You know, they want to leave America. I'm going to go to Canada and mooch off them for a while, you know. Well, the Daily Caller is reporting that, uh, that the policies that um, liberals protest with regard to President Trump cracking down on immigration, using uh, power, you know, extreme vetting measures and all that. Ironically, what these liberals who want to leave are finding out is that a lot of other countries use those techniques already. Those who are intent on jumping to greener pastures are being met with very similar strict restrictions, especially places like Australia and Canada. You try immigrating to Australia or New Zealand. Ah! In New Zealand, you have to have a minimum of $250,000 in the bank to go there. So what these goofy, goony, dimwit liberals are finding out is that, you know, America is a pretty good place. America is a very benevolent, open society. and we, we allow a lot of stuff here that nobody else on the globe does. And that may, uh, that may be our uniqueness that makes us greater, or maybe it could be our Achilles heel. If you bring in people who hate your guts and want you dead, then that's a Trojan horse. That's probably an Achilles heel moment, right? The Canadian immigration site maintains that it is considered the last resort for displaced refugees. It deems them not eligible. Uh, they really don't want the snowflakes. If you've got a degree in, uh, you know, women's sexual rights or something, probably not going to sell well in Canada. I got a degree in philosophical basket weaving. Can I get a job there? No. And so in Canada, when an individual is accepted into the refugee program um, to be selected for, for um, someone that gets government assistance or whatever, they have to have a sponsor. They have to be able to support themselves and their dependents, or they have to have a sponsor that takes full and complete financial responsibility for them. That's powerful. That's powerful. You know, in less than a week, President Trump has, has taken a sledgehammer to Obama's legacy taking a sledgehammer to this liberal lunacy that's been driving America. 
I mean, executive actions, campaign promises are falling like uh, like snowflakes. I mean, think about it. Roll back Obamacare. Obama's crowning achievement. Seeking prompt repeal of that. He's he's uh, he's, he's he's done so many things that he promised already. Trying to get a prompt repeal of Obamacare. I mean, that's a big promise to keep, and he's already kept it. I mean, it was ambitious, and people thought he wouldn't do it, and guess what? He did it. He signed a bill for the wall. He's altering and changing forever this uh, this lunacy on the border. I mean, he's not kicking the count down the road. He's, he's getting stuff done. He wants to start this wall right away. Think about it. He went and signed the XL pipeline and opened up the Dakota pipeline thing again. Whether you agree with him or not, he said he would do it, and he did. I mean, it's a big deal. To have a president that keeps his word, in my opinion, big deal. He took us out of the TPP, the Trans-Pacific Partnership, the worst trade deal ever designed by human beings. It was like, it was like, how can we really screw America? Oh, let's do the TPP. Let's really screw America. Trump says, nope, <laughs> sorry. Party's over. TPP trade deal's dead. Go cry home to your mama. We don't want to hear about it. Stopping the refugees. We're not allowing anybody in from Syria. On and on and on and on and on it goes. I mean, he just, it's just one thing after another. No more catch and release on the border. Going to build the wall. <laughs> you know? Um... Calling on ICE to get rid of all these uh, uh, criminal scumbags and enforce and, and you know d commit to the law. Whew, just got it, you know. Wow, I'm just so excited. I'm so excited. I want to dance, man. Boy, those were beautiful cars back in the day, weren't they, man? Roger Fredenberg Show, Homeland Security, and all. Oh, hi, nice to be with you. I tell you. It's harder and harder and harder to do a radio show because I'm so happy. I'm used to being like all grouchy and mean and cussing and screaming and what the heck, you know, and that gum, that Obama. And it's like, hmm? Hmm, I'm happy. I mean, I started out my career, Bill Clinton had just become president. And I spent eight long years beating the daylights out of poor old Bill Clinton on a pretty big radio show. Loved every second of it. Oh, man, I couldn't stand that guy. And now I find, you know, I'm sitting here thinking, wow, you know, it's like, what do I talk about? I can't just fill people with joy and happiness, right? Trump said we're going to get tired of winning. I'm not tired of winning yet. I'm not. I'm not tired of winning. You know, I, I tweeted Trump. I said, don't fulfill all your campaign promises in the first two weeks. What are we going to do the next uh, four years or eight years? Win, win, win. So everybody's up and said, well, you know. Donald Trump, he wants to put the tariffs on those poor Mexican imports. He wants to use tariffs. You know, if you put tariffs on, why, the consumer will get screwed, you know? It will raise the prices. Our founders set this country up to run on tariffs, duties, and excise taxes. That was the system. It worked great. Matter of fact, it still works really, really good in many places, including the Bahamas, as a one country is an example of a successful no direct tax country. See, our founders didn't want citizens to be taxed directly. Why should anyone pay a tax on the toil of their labor? You go out here and you and you spend your life force. Literally, it's your life force. This limited amount of of life force that you're given. This this detrimental element of taxation that torments you all your life stealing your labor it is a form of involuntary servitude stealing someone's labor stealing the fruits of their labor a guy goes out with a pick and a shovel and he works his butt off all day long so some scumbag government bureaucrat can come along with a gun and a knife and take it away and then give it to some loser down at the bar you know what I'm saying? this is nonsense and our founders realized how stupid it was, and they, they didn't like it, so they had 
Tariffs, duties, and excise taxes. Now, I want you to think about this for a minute. You'd lower taxes on American business 20%. And you add a 20% tariff on imported goods. It balances out quick. More importantly, it creates American jobs rather than foreign jobs. Why? Because the foreign prices naturally have to go up a little bit. That means that uh, more palatable are those products made in America now, price-wise. And because taxes are lower, they can pay higher wages and eventually lower your taxes, direct taxes on you. So th there is, you know, potentially a, a really beneficial element involved with this because you could literally get rid of direct taxation, income tax, which is not really supposed to be on wages and labor at all. Our founders never intended for your wages and your labor to be taxed. They intended for income to be taxed. Totally different thing. But the corruptocrats found a way to rip everybody off. I'm in your pocket, man. What you going to do about it? I want to pass a law that says if you don't pay taxes, you go to jail, man. Like a debtor, like a de the debtor's prison, right? Doesn't work for me. Shouldn't work for you, right? So along comes Trump, and he starts with these really progressively um, unique ideas. And I don't mean progressive in the socialist sense. I mean, things that actually can move the country forward. Unlike the fraud, the hope change and forward fraud of Obama and Hillary being realized in actual time, in real time with Donald Trump. It's amazing. I'm so excited. I just, I don't even, I don't even know where to begin with. I'm so excited. I'm so happy. I'm just happy. We'll be right back. Don't go away. I can laugh. The Roger Fredenberg Show. When things ain't funny. Wow. Video did kill the radio star. It's all true. The Roger Fredenberg Show. Always fun to be here. I tell you, it's fun. I went out uh, at the end of the um, first hour with that song I like, Happy Go Lucky Me. I just can't help it. Happy Go Lucky Me. So there's some great, just so many great things happening. I mean, Donald Trump uh, keeping all of his campaign promises for the most part. I'm sure some uh, Congress will block him on. That's what they do. They're um, obstructionists and resistors. But he seems to be doing a pretty good job fighting his way through all that silliness. you gotta, you got to give him credit for that. Now, he did something that I found just amazingly cool. When I was a kid growing up, we used to read the police report in the newspaper. Loved the, I didn't mean, you know, hey, I heard Joe got a drunk driving ticket. Yeehaw, you know, whatever. Billy Bob got arrested for burglary. Really? Billy Bob? You know, that kind of thing. Love the police reports. Well, I don't think a lot of papers even do them anymore. But I grew up in a small town. It seemed like you knew everybody who was in there. You know what I'm saying? It was fun. So I had this natural kind of inclination to like that anyway. Well, Trump now has ordered his new administration to publish a weekly list of crimes committed by immigrants. Now, I mean, this is part of the, the new executive order on immigration. Signed the fifth day of his presidency. I mean, the guy is moving fast, man. He's moving like a rocket ship. Like a time traveler, you know? Back to the future. So he's ordered the Secretary of Homeland Security to make public a comprehensive list of criminal actions committed by aliens in the United States every week. He also uh, wants to include details of so-called sanctuary cities that hand over or, or refuse to hand over immigrant residents uh, for deportation. So the order reads like this. Let me read this part to you. To better inform the public regarding the public safety threats associated with sanctuary jurisdictions, the secretary shall utilize the Decline Detainer Outcome Report or its equivalent and on a weekly basis make public a comprehensive list of criminal actions committed by aliens and any jurisdiction that ignored or otherwise failed to honor any detainers with respect to such aliens. In other words, you can't hide under the uh, cloak of the media ain't going to cover it no more. You know, the media says, oh, well, we kind of agree with your sick, demented, anti-American, unconstitutional policy. You know, you, you governors 
Jerry Brown, I'm talking to you, you flake. You and you mayors, Rahm Emanuel, are you listening? When you take an oath of office to uphold the laws of the land, we damn well expect you to do it. If you don't want to uphold the laws of the land, don't accept the office, don't take the oath, and go home and suck your thumb. You cannot accept the powerful responsibility of public service and take an oath of office to uphold the law and then give the middle finger to the law. Now, we, I'm tired of it. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sick to death of it. Don't want to deal with it anymore. I want to just grab people by the lapel and slap them silly. When they, when they refuse to do their job. Everybody else gets fired for not doing their job or has some consequence. There's usually some consequence for being an ass. Except when you work for government. Up until now with Trump, government just does whatever the hell they want. People in government, elected officials, employees, it doesn't matter. They basically just run amok, do whatever the hell they want. And nobody can do anything about it. And Trump's saying, no, nope, we're going to expose you. We're going to publish it. We're going to tell everybody what a dirtbag you really are. Now, how can you not love that? How can you not have great respect for that? I mean, you know, it's just, God, the president's calling people out. It's just like the Ill the illegal voter thing, you know? We know we have a lot of voter fraud in this country. We know a lot of illegal immigrants. We don't know exactly how many. But one report just in the last few days says at least 800,000 people for sure voted illegally in the election for Hillary. Shepard Smith went on the, uh, um, I mean, I don't like him. He's like the gay cavalier, you know, on Fox News. He went on the news and called President uh, Trump a liar. You know, he, was, he, was, he said, the list of falsehoods from the president is growing. And all of it because the president wants to deal with voter fraud. People say, well, oh, this can't be a big issue. Why is this all, why would Donald Trump just all of a sudden want to deal with voter fraud? Well, that's just... Isn't that just a red heron? Right. You see, the problem is that Donald Trump isn't just thinking of Donald Trump, which is really hard for these statesman-like, presidential-acting people to understand. Trump is saying long-term for America, what's good for America? Is it good to, you, you know, shrug off your responsibilities, obfuscate to fail to, to meet the commitments, to, to fail to do the job you were hired to do? You took an oath of office, live by it. You agreed to uphold the laws and land, live by it. Now you're going to be exposed. You're going to be humiliated. You're going to be made to hold accountable for the crimes that you're an accomplice to. In my, in my view, honestly, the, the leaders of cities who allow sanctuary city policies, who refuse to help steer criminals in the direction of ICE so they can be deported or whatever. As far as I'm concerned, they're accomplices in the future crimes, and they should be held accountable in the same way. I think it's just flatly wrong not to hold those people accountable. And so the president says, okay, we're going to put out a, a list every week of the crimes and of the uh, people who uh, essentially are accomplices to those crimes. And we're going to let the people decide if they want to allow uh, folks to keep committing crimes or not. And it's, I think it's brilliant. Now everybody's like, kind of like the wall. It won't work. It'll work. I mean, the president, you can tell somebody thought this through. Right now, everything happens in the dark. Everything happens under the cover of of, you know, concealment. But there won't be any more concealment. Now we're going to be exposing these dirt bags. So and so didn't didn't keep his oath and others uh, now here's who died because of it. Here here who was hacked up with a knife because of it. Here's who was raped because of it. It's it's I mean, man. We got more reasons to be happy than we've ever had in my lifetime in America right now. Now, I know nothing's perfect. But if I compare this president to the last one, or even to Bush, uh, G.W. Bush, I mean, there's no comparison in my view so far. I fully expect Trump will disappoint me on some subjects. He, he obviously is going to do that. 
I've never expected any president to meet me 100%. I mean, I remember Ronald Reagan saying, if I can get 80%, I'm happy. 75%, right? Me too. Give me 75, 80%. But when this guy says, we're going to eliminate 75% of these bogus regulations, I jump for joy. I get, I get, I get instantly super happy. If like if there's something called super happy, that's me when I hear somebody say, we're going to dump all these useless regulations. And I'll tell you why. Regulations are not, are not properly defined, in my view, in the Constitution because your legislators at the state level or at the uh, federal level pass these concepts, these laws, and then a bunch of government goons go and write the, uh, the supporting legislation or the or the regulations, or the administrative rules, which have the same exact impact as law, but they're not, they're not legally lawmakers, are they? And so these people just run amok, and so now these agencies at the state and local and, and federal level, all these bureaucrats, they think that their job, their number one priority, the thing that they should be doing most of, is figuring out how to screw us out of more and more with more and more regulation. I mean, it's, 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 it's mind-boggling. It's insane. There he goes again. Adjectives, adjectives. I'll tell you something. I, I look at some of these programs. Like, for example, let's take one example. Children's services in this country. I mean, talk about no bounds. Somebody needs to talk to Donald Trump about these, these lunatics in, in children's services. No due process for parents who are wrongly accused of whatever they're accused of. They just go in and take families. They just walk in literally like God, take families apart. I mean, they'll take uh, newborn babies right away from young mothers in the hospital and put them in foster care and give you the finger and say, nah, 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 what you going to do about it? No lawyers will take the cases. The judges are all in their pocket. And the Constitution provides for due process. Now, I know that it's terrible if children are abused. It is. They need advocates. They do. But you cannot abandon the Constitution and just throw due process out the window and, and do it all, you know, and have this tyranny in the name of doing it for the children. I'm sorry, but uh, you, you, can't, you can't take away the Constitution in the name of the children. Sorry, it's not going to work. It's never going to work. Uh, it's never going to work. Not ever. We live in a free country. So these are the kinds of things that bureaucrats get away with. So that's what they do with these EPA laws. They say, oh, how can we stop everybody from doing anything? Hmm, let's pass a law. Got to stop. It's got to stop. Do you understand? It's got to stop. And you can stop it. We'll be right back. It's the Roger Fredenberg Show, man. Homeland Security Radio. Maybe an oldie, but I'm a good at you. We'll have some big fun, baby. I'll last forever. Well, the world's been having their way with America up until now. Those days are over. The uh, president putting out more and more executive orders. And the conversation with Putin, which apparently centered around, I don't know if we'll ever know exactly what it was, but around, you know, joining forces to fight ISIS, stop uh, international global terrorism by the jihadists out there, the, uh, the Islamic radicals. And, you know, people say, well, I don't know why Trump would want to buddy up to Russia. You know, like Obama didn't try it and Hillary with the, uh, with the uh, reset button. Come on, give me a break. You got a guy who's got tens of thousands of missiles, uh, you know, maybe as many as 10 or 12,000 nuclear warheads, mobile launchers that could be pointed at us in milliseconds. Uh, why do you want to antagonize that guy? Why, I, mean, I mean, without real purpose or reason, why? You already know, I mean, who he is. I, mean, you know, I love that what they say about Putin. Well, he's been in power for 17 years. You know how bad he is. 
Well, in 17 years, he hasn't nuked anybody. In 17 years, other than a little skirmish with Crimea, for the most part, he hasn't done much of anything to anybody. And they say, well, you know, he assassinated a bunch of his enemies. And I'm saying, yeah, you, you never followed the Clintons? You ever take a look at how many suicides or supposed alleged suicides seem to happen in the inner circle of people close to the Clintons? Now, now you could say, well, that's that's not that's all it's all a lie. Dude. Say what you want. The numbers don't lie. The numbers don't lie. I mean, I've got a video up. You want to look up? Just look up Roger Fredenberg Clinton body count. I go through the whole list there. It's out on YouTube somewhere. Just look. Just put in Clinton body count Rogers. I'll, I'll pop up. I outline it all in detail there. It's 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 real. It's ever been as real as anything they say about Putin. I'm not defending Putin. I don't. I don't even like the communist KGB crowd. I don't even know when the communists became not communists. I, I never saw that happen. I don't know what the hell is going on with them, but I'll tell you this much. Probably uh, they have as much or more reason. Remember Chechnya? They have as much or more reason as anybody else to hate these Islamic radicals. These, these extremists, these lunatics that, that think that they have a global caliphate mission, they want to kill us all. So, yeah, I'm all in favor of, of joining with Russia and anyone else that wants to get into the fray to stop ISIS and Al-Qaeda and wipe these crazy terrorists off the face of the earth. Hell yeah! Why would you want anything less? So if the president can join together and do that, great. If he can put out, uh, you know, directives, uh, presidential directives or, or executive orders that help keep this country safe from terror and other uh, you know, potentially catastrophic uh, events, why not? It's not like the Congress has been doing anything for the last 50 years, except figuring out ways to steal more money from us. Okay, this is all these people do. They say they get into meetings, uh, local level, your city, your county, your state, and your feds. All they do is sit around in meetings and say, how can we get deeper into the pockets of the poor little people? How can we get these poor dumb sheep to pay more? Pay more, pay more, pay more. And all these government bureaucrats have these huge high-paying jobs. They do nothing. Trump wants to cut the government down by 20%. I say like maybe like 90%. The vast majority of these government bureaucrats do absolutely nothing for a living. Nothing. That's a fact. That's an, uh, that's, an, uh, that's an undisputed fact. There's no denying it. I'm telling you, there's no... What I'm saying here, there's no denying it. So, yeah, I'm excited to see things change for the better. You know, I'm excited that people could be able to get on airplanes and travel the world and not be worrying every second that some lunatic's going to blow up the plane or something. Oh, God have mercy. All right, we'll be right back on the Roger Fredenberg Show. Don't go anywhere. Oh, yeah. Miss Brooks, her body, and her three little boys. First vice president ever to speak there, speak there. I'm going to play part of that for you just because uh, it's such an amazing historical moment. You know, life is winning in Mike America. Mike Pence. And today is a celebration of that progress, the progress that we've made in this cause. You know, I've long believed that a society can be judged by how we care for our most vulnerable, the aged, the infirm the disabled, and the unborn. We've come to a historic moment in the cause of life, and we must meet this moment with respect and compassion for every American. Life is winning in America for many reasons. Life is winning through the steady advance of science that illuminates when life begins more and more every day. Life is winning through the generosity of millions of adoptive families who open their hearts and homes to children in need. Life through the compassion of caregivers and volunteers at crisis pregnancy centers and faith-based organizations who minister to women in the cities and towns across this country. And life is winning 
through the quiet councils between mothers and daughters, grandmothers and granddaughters, between friends across kitchen tables and over coffee at college campuses. The truth is being told. Compassion is overcoming convenience, and hope is defeating despair. In a word, life is winning in America because of all of you. So I urge you to press on. But as it is written, let your gentleness be evident to all. Let this movement be known for love, not anger. Well, I mean, hopefully that's true. I, I don't know if you saw the pictures of the of the horrible mess that the uh, the anti-life, the baby killers left. They left mountains and mountains and mountains and mountains and more mountains of garbage for our tax dollars to pay to pick up. You will not find that with the pro-life folks. There's not. They, they will leave the place cleaner than it was when they got there. And this is always the case. And if you don't believe me, call the National Park Service in Washington, D.C. and ask them if this isn't true. Conservative groups always leave it better than they found it. Liberal group, groups always leave it a crap hole. Piled garbage and just, just horrible condition. Doesn't that uh, by itself speak volumes about right and wrong, about who's really truly doing the work of God or the will of God or the will of goodness or however you view it versus the evil? Who would leave mountains of garbage behind? Every liberal group that ever marches in Washington, D.C. leaves mountains of garbage for the taxpayers to pay to clean up. Never happens with conservative groups. Why? Just, 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 it's just food for thought. It, to me, these little subtleties, these little tiny things you notice that maybe other people don't notice mean a lot. But to have the vice president of the United States of America go to a pro-life march. Now, I expect that Governor Pence has been there before. I didn't look it up, but I'm sure he has. But never has anyone ever gone there and spoken as a vice president before. Never has a president of the United States ever had the courage to stand up and say, I dispatched my vice president to be there. I want him there. Speaking on the behalf of a pro-life on the unborn child. It's a new day dawning in America. It's, it's a wonderful, beautiful new day dawning in America. I don't know if you heard General Mattis get, uh, get sworn in, but I also wanted to just play that real quick because that's a big deal. General Mattis is a big guy. Mr. President. Our country is so much safer because of him. Chairman Dunford, members of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, leadership of the Department of Defense, men and women of our armed forces, distinguished guests, thank you for being here today for the ceremonial swearing in of General James Mattis as the 26th Secretary of Defense of the United States of America. It is a high honor for me to be with you today. You look around this room, we stand in a place of honor the Hall of Heroes, the names of 3,498 American patriots are inscribed on these walls. Each of them performed personal acts of valor above and beyond the call of duty and received the Medal of Honor as a consequence. It is humbling for us to be among their names and to be with all of you. Secretary Mattis is a uh, soon to mark his 50th anniversary in the service of this country. During more than four decades in uniform, Secretary Mattis commanded Marines at all levels, from an infantry rifle platoon to a Marine Expeditionary Force. He led an infantry battalion in Iraq in 1991, an expeditionary brigade in Afghanistan after the 9-11 terrorist attack, went on to lead the 1st Marine Expeditionary Force, U.S. Marine Forces in Central Command. As a Joint Force Commander, Secretary Mattis commanded U.S. Joint Forces Command, NATO Supreme Allied Command for Transformation, and U.S. Central Command. At U.S. Central Command, he directed military operations of more than 200,000 soldiers, sailors, airmen, Coast Guardsmen, Marines, and Allied Forces across the Middle East. And now, Mr. Secretary, uh, your President has called you to lead all of the Armed Forces of the United States. He and I have the highest faith in your judgment, your courage, and 
your dedication to this nation. So I just find it so amazing that we got a man like this to run our military. I, If I were ISIS, Al-Qaeda, or anybody else, even the Chinese, whoever, I'd be running scared. Because this guy, Mattis, is the real deal, man. He is the real deal. Uh, General Kelly, sworn in to run uh, Homeland Security, the real deal. General Kelly, at NSA, real deal. People say, well, Donald Trump's surrounding himself with generals. That's too much military. Oh, no. Folks, it's just the right amount of military. Because America's at war. We're being invaded on our own borders. Scary times. Thank God for General Mattis. Thank God for a man who won't back down. Roger Fredenberg Show. Don't go away. Please place your left hand on the Bible, raise your right hand, and repeat after me. I, James Norman Mattis, do solemnly swear. I, James Norman Mattis, do solemnly swear. That I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States. That I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States. Against all enemies, foreign and domestic. Against all enemies, foreign and domestic. That I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same. That I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same. That I take this obligation freely. That I take this obligation freely. Without any mental reservation or purpose of evasion. Without any mental reservation or purpose of evasion. And that I will well and faithfully discharge the duties. And that I will well and faithfully discharge the duties. Of the office upon which I am about to enter. Of the office upon which I am about to enter. So help me God. So help me God. Isn't that a beautiful thing? I mean, that is a beautiful, beautiful thing, that oath. So when the governors and the mayors who, uh, who, who take these oaths and then violate them over and over again, sanctuary cities being the example, I think they should go to jail. And I'm hoping President Trump will push that to the limits. And then there's the campaign we go back, if you'll recall, Hillary Clinton put out an ad that showed children watching the TV listening to these terrible things that Donald Trump said. And all of the Holly Weird crowd jumped on the bandwagon, attacking Trump for being this vulgar man running for president. Our children see that on TV, they said. And so somebody put out a counter commercial to that Hillary Rodham Clinton campaign commercial with children watching as the Women's March went on. Here's some of that. This horrific moment of darkness. Thank you, your children are watching this. Up. They save my ass and some other parts too. And our <laughs> ain't for grabbing. This song is dedicated to the new DT in the White House. D could stand for dick. Our <laughs> are for our pleasure. Not your <laughs> Donald Trump suck a <laughs> is your erection really more? Think about it, children. Protecting watching this at home. I have thought an awful lot about blowing up the White House. I'm nasty, like my blood stains on my bed sheets. Like your all right, that's enough. I I just wanted to get this out. This commercial is out there. It shows little kids like the Hillary commercial did, watching TV in amazement as these Hollywood musical superstars, these legendary people from the entertainment world and beyond, literally some of the most foul-mouthed people on this planet out there in front of our television sets, you know, for our, for our kids to watch after they excoriated uh, D Donald Trump for that stuff, which was like nowhere near what they did. Hello? So I'm tired of hypocrisy. I'm tired of the big lies. I'm tired of our country being taken for granted. I'm tired of these people in the media playing two sides against them. Like I said, pro-abortion, um, is pro-life, or I mean, pro, I mean pro-rights, pro, pro, pro anyway, it's always anti-abortion and pro-choice, uh, whatever. It's subtle, but it's evil. So when you hear Donald Trump talk about how evil and how crooked the media is, think about that. Please think about that. Until next week, uh, this is the Roger Fredberg Show. God bless you all. God bless America.
Good night, everyone. Now you can live and-